Hey y'all, how's it going? Welcome back to Seed to Plate channel. My name is Brooke and today we are talking every variety of flower that I will be growing in 2023. <laughs> if you're new here, my name is Brooke. I'm an urban suburban gardener and I am actually building a whole new garden this year in a house that we um, have not yet revealed on the YouTubes. So very exciting year. Um, there is a lot of planning going on, but um, it's really nice to just kind of sit down and slow down and just talk about the varieties that I'm excited about. So if you like what you see, hit the like button, leave a comment, hit the subscribe button. If you're kind of unsure, just let the algorithm gods bring you back whenever they feel it's a good time. <laughs> now, this is going to be a pretty like decently long chat. So um, I got myself a nice cup of hot tea. We're having a rainy, cozy day here in Central Texas. Um, I am in zone 8B, so a lot of the things that I grow have to be drought tolerant to an extent, um, but we'll talk about each of those as we kind of go about. So I am drinking a really nice chai rebos tea. I've also got on like my fuzzy socks because it's probably like, I don't know, 55 to 60 degrees here today which is like cold. So to get us started, I will have little chapters down at the bottom. We're gonna go by perennials, annuals, um, zinnias, and then sunflowers, and we'll go by each of the varieties. But before we really dig in, I wanna show y'all where I keep my flower seeds, cause this is just really cool, and I feel like all my gardener people watching this will nerd out. So this box, it kinda just looks like a wooden box, right? Um, because it is. It's got like a nice little watermark on it. Um, but when you really start looking at the hardware, it's very old. And then I actually got this as a Christmas gift because um, my, my parents are antique people. Um, it says DM Fairy and Co's flower seeds. And so these are actually instructions on how to present seed packets in this box. And then like you can even see the hardware right here for the hinge is like super old and just like really cool. So this is where I keep all my flower seeds now. It has literally no organization, <laughs> but that's fine um, because this is just a really cool piece of, of history. And then actually the, the um, paper in here says patented in 1906. 1906, that is so old. Oh my gosh, there is a label on here. Oh my gosh, each seed packet was five cents. The total for every seed in like this box that would come in this box was eight dollars. Okay, we're gonna stop nerding out now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, y'all, we are going to start with perennials. I'm super excited about perennials. I've never um, gardened in a place where I can have perennials um, because I've always had like community gardens or like my garden at my rental house, which I had to replace with grass. Um, so I'm really excited for perennials to kind of like come back. Now, I was very confused about perennial versus annual for a long time, I don't know why. Annual, you plant it every year. Perennial, it comes back every year. So. We're gonna talk about perennials. Now, I do know that some of these are not, are gonna be either difficult or they're not gonna work out, but these are just the perennials that I'm trying this year um, from seed. I will also probably get a few um, native varieties of perennials, um, and we'll go over that in a couple of months when we get them and plant them out. So the first one is calendula. Now, I really like this kind of calendula. This is a Resina calendula. Um, it is marked as an annual, however, if you're in zone five or warmer, um, this will self-seed itself, self-sow. It will drop its seeds and it'll grow back. Um, so when we're talking about annual versus perennial, sometimes it depends on where your zone is. So this Resina calendula I've grown before and it has these just really big, beautiful calendula heads on it. Now, the next kind of batch that I'm really excited about are poppies. Now, poppies um, are ten generally very popular in places like California where they grow really well, um, but uh, they actually grow really well here in Central Texas. They have a very short season. Um, it's like right when it really starts to get warm after the last freeze and they maybe last for like three or four weeks. 
um, but they're really beautiful and they're a very important pollinator plant here because they are one of the first things that the bees really wake up to after the spring. So I have some rainbow uh, California mix poppies and I'll put some photos up for the ones that like don't have really good pictures on them. Um, I kind of went with two different color palettes for these other poppies that I got from Floret. I've never grown Floret seeds before. Floret is a flower company that's really famous out of Oregon, Washington. They have a show on Discovery Plus and Magnolia Network. Um, and even before then, they were really, really popular amongst like flower growers. So the two different kinds of color palettes I went with, one is Amazing Gray, and then Mother of Pearl. So these like really, really beautiful, like deep purples. And then I don't know what was happening in my brain, <laughs> whoever does. Um, but then I went with Pastel Meadows and pink peony. Now with the poppies and the timing of when we are moving into our house um, and gonna be building the garden, um, I might not be able to plant poppies this year. They do ha require some cold stratification, um, which means they require some cold to be able to properly germinate. So I have to do a little more research about that. I think it's already gonna be too warm to plant them and I really don't wanna waste the seed. So I probably won't plant the poppies this year, but I do have this vision of like just poppies coming up like amongst a little like suburban fruit tree orchard, if you will. So I definitely have plans for the poppies, whether it happens this year or it happens next year. Again, it's all gonna depend on the timing of when I can actually like, you know, put seeds in the ground. So that's why I went ahead and included them this year. Um, and we'll go from there. So the next ones, these are our snapdragons. Now snapdragons in much of the country are considered an annual. However, again, in zone five or warmer, it is considered a perennial because they will self-sow. When we talk about a seed self-sowing, what that means it is as long as you leave it, it'll drop its own seeds. So you, you know, you wanna make sure you leave whichever ones to dry out and drop seed if that's your goal. Another really, really popular perennial here in Central Texas, Zone 8B, is Echinacea, so the purple coneflower. Um, butterflies, bees, your pollinators love this stuff. You can actually do a lot with it. It is a medicinal flower, um, and I just think they're really, really beautiful. So. Uh, Echinacea will also be going in this year's garden. Another really popular perennial in this part of the country is Black Eyed Susan. And these are from Sow Right Seeds. I've had good success with Sow Right Seeds so far. I've never tried them. Um, they sent me some seeds to try and so far they're germinating really, really well. So we'll have some Black Eyed Susan as well. And then this is one that is also does really well here and is really popular. And that is butterfly flower. So there are these collections of really, really gorgeous orange flowers. And again, super pollinator friendly. So the perennials, I mean, all flowers are really pollinator friendly, but the perennials especially so. Now two perennials that I'm gonna attempt, but I don't have a ton of confidence in just because of my zone. One is the Alaska Shasta Daisy. I did grow Shasta daisies in my current rental house in the backyard garden, um, and they were a little bit shaded, so they actually did decently well. So I'm gonna make sure I keep that in mind with where I wanna put these, um, is just to make sure they have a little bit of shade. And then uh, delphiniums, and these are Pacific giant delphiniums. So again, I know that these aren't really for my zone, I'm just gonna give them a shot and see what happens. Um, because they're just really beautiful and I would love to at least give it a try. So next we'll go ahead and tackle annuals and I'm gonna break this up into two kind of groups because one group is marigolds. I love growing marigolds. I love the smell of marigolds. I love marigolds just like a lot. So some of these seed packets are really old because my grandma gave them to me. I'm attempting to grow them right now. Um, a couple have come up, so we're gonna keep trying it and seeing what happens. So this first one is a French double dwarf mixed um, variety. And different varieties have different characteristics, if you will. This is a sparky mixed color marigold. Marigolds are really good at keeping away pests and also some types of marigolds um, will actually help uh, if you have a nematode problem in your soil. Um, these orange flame marigolds are really, really fun. They're just a little bit unique and different. I've been growing these for a couple of years and I love them. 
Um, these red metamorph French marigolds are also really, really great. Um, these also really good pollinator plants. Um, red Marietta marigolds. These are from Seed Savers Exchange. I've always had really good luck with Seed Savers Exchange. And then a short funny story about these. These are Cracker Jack African marigolds. So African marigolds, so like we all know marigold, it's like a short little bush with these cute little flowers. I didn't understand that an African marigold is like very tall <laughs> and the flowers can be like that big. So um, I, I'm sure I have some photos which I'll pop around as I'm talking about these. I interplanted these marigolds with my tomato plants in 2021 and I just didn't realize how big they were gonna be. I thought they were gonna be like these short, you know, shrubby marigolds that were like closer to the ground. They grew like up in the tomatoes and um, it was actually great. And then I learned about these little beetles that are called scarab beetles. I'll post a photo over here. And um, they're like really cute and they literally like dug into these marigolds and got like drunk on the pollen and they would just like sit there and you would like touch them and they just like wouldn't move. And it was like the weirdest but also coolest thing. Um, so yeah, the Cracker Jack Marigolds, I am really excited to grow again. Um, and they are already popping up in my seedling tray, which is very exciting. Um, so I did not grow these last year. Um, I don't remember why I didn't grow these last year, but I didn't. So super excited about this. So next we have a few varieties of nasturtiums um, and ones that I've grown before. These are Alaska red shade nasturtiums with variegated leaves. Um, these are super fun um, and I weirdly kind of like the darker, deeper color. Um, I like having all the different colors in my garden. I'm not really somebody who like lean towards one color palette or another. Um, and then these are peach melba nasturtiums. These are really beautiful. I actually used a couple of these flowers last year to decorate a cake. I really wanna actually get better about using nasturtiums like in cooking, um, whether it's the flowers or the leaves, you can also eat the leaves. Um, so I wanna like try and make nasturtium pesto and like just do some fun stuff. And then these are a fiesta blend of nasturtium. They have some nice different colors in there. And then the one I'm excited about, this one I've never actually grown before, um, this is a trailing nasturtium. So it's actually meant to trail outside of a basket or a bed, like it's really meant to be kind of like right on the corner of a bed or like in a hanging basket. So really, really excited for this. Okay, so next is just kind of a menagerie of different annuals that I'll be growing. Um, so one that I probably could have put this in my sunflower category, but it's not technically a sunflower. I don't know. They're called Mexican torch sunflowers. And I grew these a couple of years ago. I'll pop up a photo. These are some of the most vibrantly beautiful flowers I've ever grown. Like when they say like a reddish orange, they're talking about this flower. Uh, monarch butterflies really love this flower. Um, and living in central Texas, zone AB, we definitely have monarchs that fly through. So whatever I can do to help those little baby monarchs, I'm happy to do it. A couple more that I'm really excited about, um, this peach screamer flowering tobacco. Very, very excited for this. Uh, it actually just started germinating, which is awesome. So because it has these like little like cup looking flowers. This one should also attract some really beautiful hummingbirds and butterflies, which is very fun and exciting. And then let's talk about dahlias. <laughs> you might notice I haven't actually said the word dahlia yet. And as a gardener who's on the internet. <laughs> so here's the deal with dahlias. Um, a couple of things. Dahlias are beautiful. Um, I see dahlias as one of those things that when you start looking into flowers and um, gardening, I feel like dahlia is one of those like, here's your card to get into the social media gardening club. Like, here's a point for you, you grew dahlias. <laughs> I tried to grow dahlias from tubers, did not work. Um, our zone is a bit too hot. I also think they weren't in the right spot, to be honest with you. Um, but then I started looking into sometimes if you're able to grow stuff from seed rather than tubers, 
um, you can get them better used to your environment. So that's why I went ahead and I'm gonna try some dahlias um, and see if I can get them to grow. I chose this Bee's Choice mix for the dahlias. Um, I'm not overly attached to it. It's kind of like the delphiniums and the Shasta Daisy. I wanna see if I can do it on a small level. But dahlias, dahlias are obviously beautiful, but if you don't live in an environment where they grow very well, they can be a total pain. And quite frankly, like just because you're in a warm zone, you don't need to grow the stuff that cooler zones are growing. Um, we kind of have to find our own version of what beautiful looks like, um, which I'm sure I'll talk about more in depth in another video. And the last thing in the annual section are the seashell mix cosmos. Again, I went with like two very different color palettes, kind of like this muted like gray purple and kind of this like really colorful color palette. But that does it for the annuals. So um, I am excited to see how some of these things grow just in a better space. Um, I've definitely grown a lot of them, but some of them are very new to me. Now something that's not new to me <laughs> are zinnias. I love growing zinnias. Zinnias were the first flower I ever grew. I actually used to think that like flowers weren't really worth growing um, because you can't like, I mean, you can't eat a lot of them, but you can't like, it's not like a very hearty food source. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so, like, why would I take the time to plant a flower seed than like a tomato plant, which is gonna give me like food that I can eat, right? So that used to be my attitude. And then I happen to get, um, I was putting in an order for seeds on Baker Creek like years ago and they had peppermint stick zinnias. And I was like, that just looks fun. Like that's so cool. So I ordered them and I remember I just put a seed in the ground, not thinking twice about it. And it grew so beautifully. And I was like so mesmerized by this crazy plant that I fell in love with flowers. So it all started with a zinnia. So I'm really excited. I've been growing zinnias now for years. Again, one of my favorite things to grow. Um, so one of my favorites is this beautiful yellow canary bird zinnia. Um, so I'll pop a couple of photos. I've been growing this one for a long time and it has the most beautiful like sunshine color. And I, honestly, it's like a sunflower color, like a really classic sunflower color, but in a zinnia, which is probably why I love it so much. Um, these are Luminosia zinnias. Um, I've never tried the So Right seeds for zinnias, so I'm excited for that. Um, Queen Lime zinnia. So these are just this really, really beautiful green color. Um, Queen Lime red zinnia. So that internal color is that beautiful green, and that outside is that really beautiful, deep, kind of like burgundy red. Eldorado zinnias. So these always turn out for me, they look really orange in this photo. For me, they turn out more of a sherbet color, um, kind of like this really beautiful, like light creamy orange, and it's not like quite an aggressive orange. Um, I mean, I have an aggressive orange zinnia, but the Eldorados tend to just be a little softer. Um, these Illumination zinnias, these are uh, wonderful and marvelous and produce some of the freaking fattest zinnias I've ever grown. Um, this is a fireball blend, so it's just orange and red zinnia. These are also some of my favorites that I grew last year. These are called cactus flower zinnias. Um, so I'll put up a couple of photos. These like took my breath away, I don't know why. <laughs> Um, but they were gorgeous. So I'm really excited to grow these again. Um, the ones that I grew um, were like this really beautiful, like light pink peachy color. They were phenomenal. And then um, these kind of just very, very aggressively orange zinnias. So with zinnias, I find that they really love the heat. I also find that the more you cut them, the better they will keep growing. They're definitely a cut and come again flower. So I, I, I just make vases of zinnias pretty much all spring and summer long, which is really, really fun. Big fan of zinnias. I feel like that's a good starter flower because they do really well being somewhat neglected if you forget about them. They don't really need a lot of like babying. I saved my favorite for last. <laughs> Um, sunflowers. So I love growing sunflowers a lot. I will say I skipped growing sunflowers last year for a whole host of reasons. Last year was just kind of like a train wreck of a year, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, uh, 
Texas had historic droughts and it was terrible. So with the sunflowers, one thing I've learned about sunflowers is that if you have a tight growing space, maybe think twice about growing sunflowers, especially in Texas because sunflowers attract um, this bug called the leaf-footed bug. Um, and the leaf-footed bug, um, they can get very territorial. They can't hurt you. They're just scary and they're like fat and they have like these really hard brown skeletons. They're really hard to kill, <laughs> to be honest with you. And um, that's where they like lay their eggs and then you have all these little bugs and it's gross. Now, I'm not like, I, I don't like bugs, but I, I will let the bugs live and not be annoyed with them as long as they leave me and my stuff alone. Um, they will suck the juice out of your tomatoes um, and cucumbers and anything that has water in it. And um, what that will result in is you'll see all of these like little speckled, areas in your tomato or whatever that um have had like juice sucked out of them by this bug so they're not great <laughs> because of that um but i do like desperately love sunflowers so i am going to try and find somewhere for them in my garden um i also might not have as much of an issue in the new garden with those bugs and that's kind of something else you have to consider is like sometimes you'll have pest issues um in one place that you might not necessarily have in another place so I'm gonna give it a shot, see what we end up with. I have this dream of like having a sunflower wall, but we'll see. <laughs> so I did get seeds. These are old seeds. I'm not sure how they're gonna grow, but these are seeds for the mammoth Russian sunflower. Um, so really, really super tall, but a good like classic sunflower. And then these are autumn beauty sunflowers. They're this really gorgeous orange color. These, this is a mix. So it's kind of like, see what you get. I got this mix because I desperately want to grow that one. That like peachy pinky sunflower. That's the one I would love to grow. But this is a florist's mix as well. So these are all kind of meant for cutting. Um, so you can actually grow them pretty close to each other um, because you want them to be vase height. So with sunflowers, um, it's pretty dependent on the variety as well but if you get a florist's mix and you're wanting to have cut sunflowers you want to plant them really close together um that will help them stay nice and small so you can actually plant them for bases if you want to grow like the biggest sunflower you've ever grown um you want to make sure it's not really close to much else and i the other thing i'll say about sunflowers is their roots are very aggressive sunflowers are extremely drought resistant and they take a lot of nutrients out of your soil and their roots are insane. If you've ever tried to pull up like a really massive thick stalk sunflower, you can't. So the one thing that sunflowers are really good for is breaking up clay soil. So we have clay here in Texas um, and a lot of it. So because those roots are so aggressive, um, they are really good at breaking up really hard soil, um, which is great. Now, the way that I've dealt with tearing them down is I'll literally just cut the stalk down and then I'll let those roots decompose in the soil, which is really good for the soil. Um, I'll let those roots decompose in the soil, honestly, for like a couple of months, and then I'll go through and pull them out. Um, so just... Just a side note about why you actually wanted to have sunflowers because so far all I've said is that they <laughs> they take up nutrients and they give you pests. Um, so the next variety is vanilla ice. These are just really, really beautiful white sunflowers. The chocolate cherry sunflower. I would also like to try and grow some of these more towards the fall because um, some of them have like very fallish colors. So that's something I might try as well as doing like a flush in the spring and summer and then doing a flush in like late summer, or early fall because fall here in Texas is still like 80 degrees. And then we have sun gold sunflowers. This is an heirloom beauty mix. So this is a variety mix from Botanical Interest. There's only a few left in here. So I'll probably finish out the packet. And then sunspot dwarf sunflowers. I grew these a couple of years ago. They're very funny little sunflowers. They don't get very tall, maybe like four feet max. Um, I do this because I'm really short. I'm like five feet tall. So we're like a little bit less than Brooke. 
but their heads are massive. Like they have the most massive sunflower heads and then like these little tiny petals that like go all around it. So it's definitely a unique sunflower, but I do really like growing them. This is more of a fall sunflower for me. This is the Chocolat from Botanical Interest. And then a Rouge Royale, again, for me, more of a fall vibe. Lemon Queens are your very classic sunflower. They can get very tall, they're very yellow. And then Velvet Queen. And that, my friends, is every single variety of flower that I am growing this year. Um, there's probably way better people to teach you how to sow flowers inside. I tend to follow all the directions on the seed packets of like whether you should sow it inside or outside. Um, other people have different takes, so I'm still learning about flowers for sure, but I am very excited to have all of my flowers in our new garden and backyard, which you will see from me in a couple of months. So thanks so much for watching. Happy gardening, and we'll see you next time.